Boketov Khabrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and uh, looks like that exactly what NATO is trying to do is provoke Russia, playing a game of chicken, something that we call in the United States back many years ago, especially very popular game during the 50s and the 60s where young teenagers would take their cars, those that don't really know what playing chicken is all about, and they would drive them at super fast speeds head on, and at the last moment, whoever was what they would call chicken, or afraid in other words, would quickly dive out of the way to keep from having the head-on collision. That was a very popular game many, many years ago in America. But now it seems that NATO is using this exact same game, endangering not only well, not just endangering, killing uh, civilians, Syrian civilians in their air attacks that they're doing in Syria, but playing chicken with Russia, bringing in their pilots such as Belgium and Turkey recently and bombing different uh, people there inside of Syria there without authorization, not even flying with uh, the U.S.'s coalition that, is, that claims that they target ISIS, but instead they've been targeting uh, Syrian civilians and in the case of Belgium, according to the uh, Russian claims there, and the, uh, the Kurds have been uh, the latest target, target of Turkey. I cannot help but wonder, though, if NATO isn't intentionally trying to get Russia or Syrian army to react by shooting down one of the planes. Why? Because as it was threatened the other day uh, to Russia, that if you do one step into the Balkans, for example, then you've got the United States on your back. So if you mess with one NATO member, and that's one of the things that was speaking about, but they were talking about the Balkans uh, because of the tensions between Russia and NATO on the uh, European border lines up around Latvia, Lithuania, places such as this here. Uh, but now there's, they're using this same threat in Syria. And what they're doing is trying, from my perspective anyway, NATO is trying to get Russia or the Syrian government one to shoot down one of its NATO jets in the region there and then justify to be able to bring all of NATO's forces in on top of Syria at one time. I know there's a lot of big stir right now because Russia is sending eight ships down to, the, to Syria to, 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 for the protection of President Bashar al-Assad in the event that NATO launches an attack on, on the country itself, which as, as I said, it clearly seems to be exactly what they're trying to do. This article right here that was carried on RT, Radar Data Proves Belgian F-16 Attacked Village Near Aleppo Killing Six. Uh, that's according to the uh, Russian uh, sources there. Said the Russian insists the two Belgian warplanes flying from an Air Force base in Jordan attacked a village in Syria, citing Radar Data Belgium denies conducting any airstrikes. Now here's what's interesting. I've brought this out before in a, in a prophetic broadcast briefly not long ago. There is an, a very powerful biblical passage that speaks about the children uh, that live in Jordan, the Ammonites, going, running, going out of their own country, becoming refugees as well. But yet nobody thinks that this would happen in Jordan. Let a war break out in the region. Let Mr. Gog over there in the administration right now, Obama, bring his entire NATO forces here, and you're going to see a real Gog and Magog war played out. Now, I know there's, there's many that think that Russia is the Gog of Magog, but I am going to be doing an, uh, an in-depth look at this for you so you can see exactly who Gog really is, and it is going to be Obama. Remember, they have all sorts of armor and military suits and stuff. Why? Because NATO is a multinational force. You'll see exactly who it is. Don't worry. Going to break it all down so nobody makes a mistake on that. But anyway, Belgium is not alone. Like I said, Turkey as well. Syria threatens to shoot down Turkish planes in its airspace after attack on the Kurdish bases. By the way, that attack, and this is according right here to the, my, uh, excuse me, Riskmat.com says Turkey continues attacks after killing 200 Syrian Kurds. This isn't just military people. This happens to be civilians. I think it's 150 civilians were killed, murdered. 
You, I mean, this is really ridiculous. They talk about the crisis in Aleppo, which is caused mostly not by Russian bombardment or Syrian bombardment. It's caused by, guess who? The U.S.-backed rebels. They're bombing and shelling civilian areas intentionally, trying to raise up the civilian death toll to say, oh, look what Russia's doing. Look what Syria's doing. How much more garbage are we going to buy out of this propaganda machine? I guess CNN and Fox News has become very popular in America and everybody seems to believe it. I did it one time as well. I have to confess the truth is the truth. I believed it as well. But when you start to see both sides of what's going on, then you find out what the truth really is. And the truth sometimes really does hurt. All right. Now, uh, let's see. We got that right. One thing I want to share with you too. I want everybody to make sure you send President Obama a thank you letter today, especially those citizens of Belgium, France, and Germany uh, that ended up with the crisis of all the refugees. Oh, I'm sorry. The Russians did it. Don't forget. If you burnt your toast this morning, the Russians did that as well. And of course, the Russians are also the ones that took out and hacked all the emails, etc. That's kind of funny because, you know, here in the Czech Republic, the, uh, the U.S. Uh, embassy made sure they arrested a Russian guy living in the Czech Republic, put him in prison and want to bring him to America to try him for, uh, for doing Internet hacking on the United States. Russia is wanting him sent to Russia, though, instead. But here's what's funny. The hacks continue to go on, and yet they've arrested some guy, and they're blaming him for the hacks in the United States, but yet the hacks don't, be, don't seem to cease. And this has been going on for some time. You just don't know the guy got arrested, and it really was not the guy that hacked the emails by by the way, because the hacks continue. And what are they doing? They're blaming all the downage of the internet system in America on the Russians. You ever think that maybe that's an inside job in America in order to make sure that y'all don't keep exposing Hillary Clinton in the first place there so that they can go on with the election, get the woman voted, get her into office? It's not going to be because she got voted into office. They're just going to put her into office. Somebody please wake up and say hello. Okay, by the way, uh, she had to apologize to the Catholic Church, too, for the stand on abortion, for the human rights and stuff like that, which I have to agree with the Catholic Church on that. I'm against abortion as well. So that's one good thing that the Catholic Church has done. So if I've never said anything good about the Catholic Church, that's the only one that I can see myself that's not a bad idea. Anyway, what I wanted to tell you, though, be sure to send a thank you note to all the Obama administration who originally created ISIS, who also caused the unrest in the Middle East, who also caused all of the refugee crisis. Did, does everybody forget that the refugees ended up in Europe long before Obama, I mean, excuse me, long before Vladimir Putin went in there to try to end the war uh, that was causing the, the Syrian country to be totally collapsed? I guess everybody forgot about that. No, the Syrian refugees came in long before then. And by the way, according to a good friend of mine in Holland, who has actually spoke to the refugees personally one-on-one, -on -one, said that they were paid to come here, said there was jobs and money waiting for them and even women. Well, we found out recently a lot of the Syrian women that are fighting in the Syrian army, they said they have had to go to fight in the war because their husbands all left them to go to what? Europe, where there was money and women waiting for them and left their wives behind and their children to suffer and have to go fight for themselves in the war. Well, this is what we got here in Europe now. Everybody say hello to the new guys, refugees riding on the subway there right in Europe. <laughs> So much for peace, huh? I uh, hear Sweden's got about 50 something places, no go zones. Uh, and these were, I mean, I, no, don't get me wrong. I realize there's families that actually came from Syria as refugees that don't want any part of this type of nonsense that you see right here. But there were huge, massive amounts of men brought, no families whatsoever, with the promise of free money, place to stay, and women.
and now we're finding out, we'll be doing a special report on this, Jan and my wife will be doing a report on that, about how that the women in Syria speak about how their husbands have left them to go to a better life in Europe. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.